In part one of the Tiger series, we start with an overview over the technical characteristics of the thermal attachment from Berlin. The specs and the technical data, like the weight, the compact dimensions and the inner value. And what are the unique selling points of the Tiger? For example, it can be mounted on a MG without interfering with the reload functions and much more. But now to the button. Number one at the button and number two on the top. Each button has two functions. Button one adjusts the display brightness. There are eight settings from zero to seven. Briefly pressing button one changes the brightness and contrast of the display in eight alternating stages meaning you switch through one stage after the other. First, it gets darker and then lighter again until it reaches the maximum. Then it gets darker again. This prevents unwanted dazzle while operating in the dark. Press and hold button one to calibrate the device. It can be done in a different way too. We will show you in a second. Press button two briefly to switch between the different digital zoom levels. Don't forget that you are looking at a display. If you change the magnification on your scope, on the daylight scope, you zoom into the display and this will result in an unsharp, very pixeling picture. So the Tiger itself offers the possibility to zoom into the frame and that is what the Tiger see. A very interesting and important point. But more on this in a second. At this point, it is worth noting that the Tiger is primarily designed for a scope with a one to four time magnification, like the Elkan from Spectre here. Press and hold button two to switch through the color presets, the different filter modes. All our devices have up to 15 different modes, which can be activated and deactivated over the menu, depending on operation requirements. Button three and four are located on the top and on the back side. These are mainly for the menu navigation. Button four is also for switching the device on and off. But there is a much better option to start a Tiger. For this, we have to take a look at the impressive front, which can be closed with an integrated front cover. This flap is held in place with a bungee cord and it's also an integrated magnet switch, which starts the device when it opens and shuts off when it closes the cover. This is the standard features of all Anders Industries devices. Opening the flap starts the unit, closing it shuts it down. Pretty easy, right? Furthermore, the flap is used for manual calibration. When you close the cover for half of a second, the Tiger will be calibrated silently. Calibration means that the device is matched to the ambient temperature. Everything has to be harmonized with each other. That's basically the whole point of calibration, to put it simple. But of course, it's not that simple in the end. It is especially true for the real world implementation. There will be a special on this topic on this channel where we explain everything about calibration in more detail. If the cover is closed longer than 1.5 seconds, the device shut down. This makes it quick and easy to put the unit into standby mode and it can also be quickly returned back into active mode. Here at Anders Defense, we offer two different versions of the Tiger. Because of our corporate orientation, our focus is clearly on the Tiger M version. M stands for military and it's intently exclusive for governmental use only. But with the Tiger Z models, they are also available for the civilian market. The Z stands for civil and since we are in Germany, we write civil with a Z or C in America, of course. But what are the difference? With the M version, we can activate several different radicals. Also, according to the German law, the Tiger M is classified as a standalone thermal scope. However, it is not recommended. If you take a look through the device, you will also immediately notice why. 
the display is too small because the Tiger was primarily, primarily designed as a clip-on device in combination with a magnifying rifle scope, a daylight scope. In addition, the Tiger M is equipped with a direct weapon mount. We choose the Aeratec clamp from Recknagel, a highly repeatable and stable system. The set version, on the other hand, has a thread on the backside for various scope adapters. This is a useful option, for instance, if you don't have a Pekedini rail in front of your scope or because you are simply not allowed by local law. In this case, we offer adapter systems from Rusan, Croatia, and the German-made Präzise Jagen adapter. Both companies offer a wide variety of adapters for optical devices. You only need the size of the Tiger thread, which is M52 by 0.75, and the outside diameter of your scope. It's the best to measure with a tape to determine the correct size. In this case, we have a 62 mm adapter, which is placed over the scope. You can adjust it with a screw so it doesn't move. Then it fits tight. Maybe not perfect. The disadvantage of this clamp is that you put it on a circular object. A circular object means you have no uh, automatic alignment. Of course, you should make sure this is precisely aligned. But at the end of the day, we don't just want to observe with the Tiger, we want to make a safe shot. You therefore have to be extremely careful that the adapter is aligned exactly with the same position in which the device is zeroed. Even if the thread fits on the Tiger, it can happen that the clamp hits the bottom, for example. It's unusable. In this case, there's a small screw on the Tiger that can be used to align the position of the clamp, a small but important detail. But the thread can also be used to attach a magnifying eyepiece and therefore convert the Tiger into an observation, de observation device for a spotter, which are categorized as so-called dual-use device. And this might be interesting because of the local law. The Tiger set are not able to blend in a reticle, what makes in a clip on only device. Not a big deal, but good to know. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the Tiger. Here we have a few thread holes, fits a quarter thread, and that's standard for a ball head if you want to use the Tiger on a tripod as an observation device. There are eight additional holes for adapter plates, which are available in different heights, 36, 38, and even a 51.3 version for a grenade launcher. These are necessary to align the thermal device with the height of your rifle scope. If you have a weapon with a Picadini in front of the scope, like here on an R15 system or an advanced sniper rifle system with a night vision bridge, like here, we recommend to mount the Tiger directly on the rail. The advantage is obvious. You have a very high repetition rate, even up to caliber 50 BMG. If you always use the same slot on the rail, you can take the terminal off and on again without losing zero. It's not that simple with the clamp adapter. For the different mounting options, we always recommend to check the local law. However, because of the wide range of requirements for our users, the Tiger M is also on request available with a backside thread, like this version for the Czech paratroopers. Greeting out to you guys. In the third part of the Tiger series, the Tiger is mounted on a weapon and now must be zeroed in. A heat pad can help to better see the target image in the thermal device. And the Tiger now has to be adjusted to the rifle scope on the internal zoom levels. It's called to be collimated. Why is the subpixel collimation a unique feature on the Tiger? Let's find out. Stay tuned, stay safe, your Stefan.